Flashes of light reveal how plants signal danger. Researchers have found that plants communicate distress by using their own signaling system. University of Wisconsin-Madison professor of botany, Simon Gilroy, and his lab have revealed how glutamate activates a wave of calcium that spreads across leaves to warn of danger. Scientists already knew that wounding a plant triggers a defense response, and that if you wound a leaf, you get an electrical charge, as well as a propagation that moves across plants. Gilroy and his team wanted to know what triggered the charge and how it moved through the plant. Calcium was one possibility, but the researchers needed to be able to see calcium in real time. So special plants were developed to produce a protein that only fluoresces around calcium. The team then subjected the plants to caterpillar bites, scissor cuts, and crushing wounds, and used video to track the responses. In response to each type of distress, videos show the plants light it up as calcium spreads from the site to damage other leaves. The scientists were then able to pinpoint glutamate as the trigger that sent out the waves of calcium. These next stories will grow on you. Scientists make glow-in-the-dark plant. Can you imagine using a plant for a bed light? Scientists at MIT have developed a plant that can glow in the dark. They say it can be used for late-night reading. To light up the plants, they used an enzyme in fireflies known as luciferase. This provides the insect with their glow. The scientists say their work could possibly be applied to street lamps. So, would you use a plant as a replacement for your light? Sewage plants leaking plastic beads into British seas. Here's some good news for a change. Looks like we've discovered a new source of ocean plastic pollution. According to a new report, sewage plants could be leaking millions of tiny plastic beads used for wastewater treatment into British seas. 55 treatment facilities across the UK use the 3.5 millimeter wide bio bead plastic pellets to filter chemical and organic contaminants out of sewage. Bio beads are used in the last step before treated effluent water is discharged back into rivers or the sea. Currently, no mechanism is in place to stop the beads in the event of a spill. Plastic microbeads kill marine life by blocking the digestive tract, but also as a result of exposure to chemical pollutants like DDT and PCBs that attach to the plastic beads in seawater. Even in space, you have to eat your greens. NASA hopes its astronauts will be able to keep up their veggie intake on future missions to the moon or Mars, thanks to a greenhouse project it's working on with the University of Arizona. The prototype lunar greenhouse is cylindrical, measuring 18 feet in length and more than 8 feet in diameter. The garden uses a hydroponic system, in which water enriched with nutrient salts flows continuously through the roots of the plants. Carbon dioxide exhaled by astronauts can be absorbed by the plants. In return, the plants produce oxygen for the astronauts through photosynthesis. The exchange forms a bioregenerative life support system. NASA's Veggie Plant Growth System was the first fresh food growth experiment on the International Space Station. The space agency hopes to provide a more sustainable approach to long-term exploration on the Moon, Mars, and beyond. Largest ever reforestation planned in the Amazon. A project in the Amazon rainforest is aimed at using a new technique to plant trees in the largest ever tropical reforestation. Conservation International plans to restore 70,000 acres of land cleared for grazing with 73 million trees in the Brazilian Amazon. The trees will be planted in the arc of deforestation that stretches across the Brazilian states of Amazonas, Acre, Pará, and Rondônia, as well as the Xingu watershed. The planting method is called muvuca, which is Portuguese for a small place with many people. It involves spreading hundreds of native tree seeds of various species over deforested land. Plant-by-plant -plant reforestation techniques usually have a density of 160 plants per hectare, while with muvuca, density is 2,500 species per hectare. Scientists believe after 10 years, it could reach 5,000 trees per hectare. Hopefully, these new trees and America's willingness to practice sustainability can help slow down global warming. Yeah, right. We're screwed. A power plant that takes away carbon emissions. Say hello to the world's first negative emissions power plant. The geothermal plant in Iceland, in cooperation with Climeworks, will remove an estimated 50 metric tons of carbon dioxide from the air each year. The process works by pulling carbon dioxide from the ambient air using a special filter. 
The heat from the power plant warms up the filter, which extracts pure carbon dioxide. The gas is then combined with water and pumped 700 meters underground. When the carbon dioxide reaches basaltic rock, it forms minerals. The project is still in the pilot phase, but researchers at Climeworks believe negative emissions plants could be set up around the world. One major obstacle in place is the price. Climeworks estimates it runs around $600 to extract one ton of carbon dioxide from the air. However, if economies of scale can be utilized and more plants open up, that price would drop significantly. Drones sow the seeds for a greener future. Scientists in India plan to turn a difficult-to-reach area near Bangalore into a lush green forest by dropping seeds from drones into the soil. The first drone seed bombing experiment took place on June 5th to mark World Environment Day. Researchers from the Indian Institute of Science in Bangalore will drop seed bombs on an arid hill range north of the city. They plan to cover 10,000 acres, an area equivalent to more than 5,500 soccer fields. Seeds from native species, such as tamarind, will be wrapped in balls of manure and soil before being dropped from the sky. Drones equipped with cameras will be used to geotag the area and monitor the progress of the project. Around a dozen native tree species have been chosen for the project, which scientists hope will help a forest flourish and encourage wildlife to return to the area. According to scientists, goats that graze on saplings, the dry climate and climate change are some of the biggest challenges to the project. 